the car is driving around a circle with a 15 mile radius. At t minutes, the position of the car is given by the parametric equations. The graph of the circle is shown here on the left. The first question is at what position does the car start? Well, the car starts at time t equals zero, so to determine the point on the circle where the car starts, we need to find x of zero, which will give us the x-coordinate, and y of zero, which will give us the y-coordinate. So x of zero is equal to 15 times cosine of, well, if t is zero, this product would be zero, so we'd have cosine zero. Cosine zero is equal to one, which means the x-coordinate of the starting position is positive 15. And now to find the y-coordinate, we need to find y of zero, which is equal to negative 15 times the sine of, again, this would be zero. Well, sine zero is equal to zero, so the y-coordinate would be zero. So the starting position is the point given by the ordered pair 15 comma zero, which would be this point here on the x-axis. So we'll identify the position by the ordered pair 15 comma zero. Now to give more meaning to our graph here, Let's think of this in terms of north, south, east, and west. So let's label the positive y-axis north, the negative y-axis south, the positive x-axis east, and the negative x-axis west. Number two, we're asked what direction does the car move, clockwise or counterclockwise? So now we know the car starts here, but as t increases, we want to know would the circle be traced out in this direction clockwise, or this direction counterclockwise. And there are several ways to determine this. We could just make a table of values and find some additional points on the circle as t increases. But let's actually take a look at the graph of x of t and y of t separately. Remember, the x values control the direction east and west, and the y values control the direction north and south. This graph should look familiar where we have an amplitude of 15 and two pi divided by 25 change the period of our cosine function. But because x of t is on the vertical axis, which controls the direction east and west, let's label the positive vertical axis east and the negative vertical axis west. And of course, the horizontal axis would be the input variable t for time in minutes. And then looking at y of t, notice how this is the sine function reflected across the horizontal axis because of the negative with an amplitude of 15, and again, a modification of the period. But because y controls the direction north and south, let's label the positive vertical axis north and the negative vertical axis south. Now let's see what happens to each component as t increases. Notice as t increases, the graph goes downhill, which means it's heading toward the west. And then on the graph of y of t, as t increases, notice how the graph is going downhill, which means the car is also going south. So from the starting position, the car is traveling southwest. So from this point, if the car is traveling southwest, it'd be traveling in this direction as t increases. Which is clockwise. Let's also look at this on the graphing calculator. To save some time, I've already entered the parametric equations into the calculator. Remember to change to parametric mode. You press mode. Go down to this row here, highlight parametric, and then press enter. And then when you press y equals, you can enter your parametric equations. Again, I've already adjusted the window, but I do want to show you that when I press window, I did start t at t equals zero. So now if we press graph, if I press the trace key, and then the right arrow, it'll show me the orientation or the direction the curve is traced as t increases. So if I press the right arrow, Notice as t increases, the circle is traced out in a clockwise direction. Of course, another option would be to make a table of values or use the table of values from the graphing calculator. If we press second graph, we could select several values of t, find the x and y coordinates, and then plot the points on the circle to see what direction the curve is traced. And the last question is how long does it take for the car to make one complete revolution? Well again, going back to the graphs of x of t and y of t, we can see both of these graphs have a period of 25, which means it takes 25 minutes for the car to make one revolution around the circle. Notice how after 25 minutes, where the car is 15 miles east 
and in between north and south, which means it's at the point 15 comma zero. And another way to recognize how long it takes to make one complete revolution around the circle would be to remember that when we have functions in the form y equals a cosine bx, or y equals a sine bx, the period is equal to two pi divided by b. So remembering that formula, notice how here b is equal to two pi divided by 25. So for both functions x of t and y of t, the period is equal to two pi divided by two pi divided by 25, which is equal to two pi times 25 over two pi, which does simplify to 25, and t is in minutes. So number three, the answer is 25 minutes. If we go back to our graphing calculator one last time, and go back to the graph, if we press trace again, and keep going around the circle, notice how we'll return back to where we started, the point 15 comma zero, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says t equals 25, and we're back to the starting position. We can also see this from the table. If we press second graph, again, we're starting at the point 15 comma zero. If we go down to t equals 25, this would be the first time we return back to the starting position of 15 comma zero. The calculator is having a little bit of a problem evaluating y of t when t equals 25. Notice here it's showing scientific notation, two times 10 raised to the power of negative 12, but here y of t is really equal to zero. I hope you found this helpful.